Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald at Lincoln Line Community College in a bird identification course. What's unusual about this course is that here at Lincoln Land, they've got nets out where we can capture wild birds, and they have one of the very few bird banding facilities of, of any college around. And Tony Rotering, it's, it's really interesting that you have students of traditional age, you have older students, you have anybody that wants to learn about bird identification in the woods here at Lincoln Land Community College, it's a good place to do it. Absolutely, it's a wonderful thing. We are unique from that standpoint because we are the only college that has such a facility in Link in, in Illinois. In so the state of in Illinois. In the state of no Illinois. Kidding. So it's uh, so it's a it's a great opportunity. I mean, I love it because I love birds. I love being out here. I love uh, capturing them, banding them, etc. Yeah. But then also to bring my students out here, it's one thing to talk about uh, biology and birds in the classroom and to show pictures, mm -hmm. but to see it in action and to see the birds, to have them in hand, to see the process and see science in action. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. It, so it's it, a great educational opportunity. It really is. For people that don't know what bird banding is, they're going to learn that during this program. Correct. And it's a very specific scientific method of recording migration patterns, the ages of birds, you know, what, what they eat, where they go. Um, and, and there aren't many bird banders around. We, we have yourself and Vern Clean here, who's an avian ecologist, who, who are certified or licensed bird banders, but not just anybody can do that. Isn't Correct. That right? It's a highly regulated process through the U.S. Geological Survey. It requires a federal permit, and it's not an easy permit to get. So you have to be very knowledgeable. You have to show that knowledge. You're able to collect the scientific data and properly identify the birds. Because mm -hmm. if we can't do that, then we shouldn't be out here collecting that information. Every morning, these nets are put up right before daybreak, and the birds then are captured. And in fact, let's go. Let's go see how sure. it's done. Absolutely. We're a little late today. It's like uh, oh nine o'clock. But this happens about daybreak. But th this bird has been captured early this morning. And what you do is go around and you and your assistants collect them, bag them, and then take them up and band them. Correct. Now this bird doesn't look like he's in any kind of distress. What are we looking at here? So this is a dark-eyed junco. Uh, the uh, this is a bird that sometimes folks will call them snowbirds. Mm -hmm. And they are here during the winter time, and we're just transitioning into them starting to head north. And they'll move up into Canada, the northern tier of the, of the mm -hmm. continental U.S. states, and that's where they'll breed. So it is captured in this mist net. It is a mist net. They're very fine. And uh, there are these long cords that are called trammels that uh, hold the net and kind of creates a pouch. The mm -hmm. idea is the birds won't see them and that they will fly into the net. They fall into this little pouch and then they are fairly easily e mm -hmm. extracted. Well, let's see how it's done. Okay. So it does take kind of a, a, it's a, it's a process that you learn. There's particular ways in which you do it. And, um, and so very carefully, we'll make sure that the legs are, are free and uh, without causing any harm to the bird, holding it gently. You know, some birds can be, uh, can, can be rather uh, vocal when you're doing this, <laughs> and sometimes they're biting you or, mm -hmm. and such. Um, you know, fortunately, we picked a bird that, uh, uh, or we had captured one that was, that was pretty, pretty uh, docile mm -hmm. and also fairly easy to extract. Now, this bird, was a bird that um, was already banded. So you can see the, the band on it. So more than likely, mm -hmm. this is a bird that we captured sometime this spring since we've been in operation since the middle You'll of know that because that band has a st distinctive number. And if you've recorded it, that's how you know you've already banded this bird. Exactly. But you'll also know it was banded by somebody else because that's recorded as well, right? That's exactly right. And we have had we, those birds that when we capture them that are caught at other banding stations mm -hmm. and banded uh, those are referred to as foreign recaptures, and we have had a couple of birds uh, at our banding station that have been banded by other banders. Now, on a normal morning, how mm -hmm. many birds would you capture in these Okay, nets? so a typical morning, I'd say probably on average, so we're putting it just in this holding bag temporarily, mm -hmm. just to, in a fairly low stress environment mm -hmm. while we take it to the banding station, but a typical morning 
we will ban somewhere between 20 and 30 birds. Mm -hmm. There are occasions where we only catch a handful of birds, and then there are days where we can catch upwards to 100 and 150 birds. Mm -hmm. So we do have some very busy mornings. And we have roughly about 27 of these mist nets that we operate. Oh, that's a lot. A, that's yeah. a lot of work to collect that it all is. day. And you do go through in the morning, you keep checking them and checking Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Because you don't want to leave any birds in the nets. No. You make sure that they're all cleared out, right? That's correct. And we are checking the nets every 30 to 40 minutes. And in some cases, if we don't have enough help, then we don't put up as many nets. So these nets are collapsed down when we're not out here, so mm -hmm. they are just not up to catch birds when nobody's here. And then we tie them off to ensure that they are, cannot be opened. Yeah. Well, let's go see what we got. Absolutely. <laughs> Tony, okay, we've cleared the nets. The nets go up, you know, early in the morning. Correct. You go, one of the first things you do at daybreak is go and, and, and capture the birds out of the nets. Correct. So we've cleared the nets, and you've got bags of birds here. Absolutely. Does each bird get its own bag? Yes. Ideally, we are just keeping a single bird in each bag. Mm -hmm. And definitely, there's occasionally, if we have a really, really busy day, we sometimes have to put a couple birds in a bag, but they're always the same species. And, uh, so they don't work each other. That that's way, exactly right. right. But okay. ideally, there'll be one bird per bag. Mm -hmm. And you got a bag around your neck. I do. Can we look in there? Absolutely. So in here. So the, bat, the birds just sit in here very cautiously, mm -hmm. and, um, and they, they're under no stress whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so then we just, uh, we're just going to extract just a temporary holding bag. We then just extract it in a careful manner. Oh, it looks manner. like a robin. It looks and like a robin. It is. <laughs> and so this is a robin. So an American robin, mm -hmm. technically. And so it's... Uh, and so it's ready to be processed and ready to be banded. Uh -huh. Now those are common, you catch a lot of robins, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, we do. And, and they stay all year long, so I mean, they're, they're, they're here all the time, right? They technically do. Now in the winter time, they uh, tend to be somewhat nomadic and they, tend, they will migrate, but we most definitely will have robins here during the winter. But it's not necessarily the robins that we have here during the summertime. Oh. So it could be from further north or mm -hmm. such. But as food sources are available, berries and, and even worms and such, they will definitely be around. Now you have to know how to hold that. And I moved and that's why he just did that. But right. you have to know, that bird's very calm because you're holding it the right way. Correct. So how, do, how do you do that? So we have standard holds that we use as banders. And ideally we're going to hold the bird so that um, there's no stress on the legs and a chance of any harm to the legs whatsoever. So when it is startled, I have a firm grip, and so yeah. it's it's not there's not going to be any broken bones or any he, strained he muscles. He looks like he's enjoying it. The Absolutely. experience. <laughs> well, as much as he can as enjoy as he it. Can, I, yeah. We like to think he's very very yeah. happy. Okay, now we're going to get to the banding later on, but let's let's find a, another bird that you Absolutely. captured this morning that's a little maybe a little less common Absolutely. than a robin. So we've had a very good morning, and so we have a nice selection of birds. So the other bird I'm going to show you is, is actually still a fairly common species, especially in the wintertime. It's definitely migratory. It's not here in the summer. It moves further north, Canada, etc., in order to, to breed. And this is oh, one tiny. of our smallest birds next to hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's two species that you can find here in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And this Lovely one. little thing. Yes. Look at the color on his head. You can head. hear it. You hear that hear real high-pitched okay, call? Let's, I'm going to be quiet so we can get, pick it up on the microphone. Now, if it's going to... Mm-hmm, little cheap cheap. Yeah, mm -hmm. very, very high-pitched. So this is referred to as a kinglet. And uh, this particular one is called a golden-crowned kinglet. Mm -hmm. And this is a real easy to identify the gender as well. So on golden-crowned kinglets, you'll notice when you look at the, the crown, and the students can see this as well, that it has a nice orange coloration mm -hmm. in there. But it, so that tells us it's a male. Mm -hmm. If it was just a straight yellow coloration, then we would know that that is a female. That's kind of common in birds too, isn't it? That the males decorate are decorated and the Absolutely. females are. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, if there is a coloration difference between the, the, the genders, sexually dimorphic, then typically it is the males that are going to be much more colorful. Mm -hmm. Now you always measure these birds before Absolutely. you ban them. How do you measure something that small? So what we do, a couple standard measurements that we take 
is uh, the first one is referred to as a wing cord. It's a standard measurement that the banders take where we look at the length from the wrist bones of the bird, which you cannot see, of course, all the way to their tips of their outermost oh flight goodness. feathers, which are their primary feathers. Mm -hmm. And so with the, holding it properly so where there's no stress on the bird, mm -hmm. we then just, if it cooperates, and they don't always, we just take, we kind of bump up that those wrist bones mm -hmm. to the end of the ruler, and then we measure it. And so in the metric side, so it's um, in millimeters, about 58 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So that is then recorded. And um, it is sort of, a, it's sort of like going to the doctor's office and getting some very basic metrics taken, some various measurements. And just for future references, for comparative purposes, it can be very useful information. Every bird that you capture will have these, these whatever you can gather, whatever data you can gather correct. about that bird written down and recorded. And that goes into some kind of a central database. That it? is correct. So all of the data that's collected in North America is going to be governed through the U.S. Geological Survey. And so all that data is pooled at the end of the calendar year. Uh, the permit holder sends all that data in. And so then it is accessible by scientists literally around the world. Mm -hmm. And here at our banding station, we have over, our, this is our 11th full season, we have banded over 18,000 birds. But when you wow. look at uh, the, you know, all banding data collectively, that's a huge yeah. pool of data. So one little metric of a wing cord measurement on one little kinglet may not mean much, but when you look at all that information and how scientists can use that mm -hmm. to better understand the species. It's, is, it's is this little guy just moving through or does he Absolutely. live? Absolutely, he's, he's, he's moving through. Mm -hmm. So in the process of migrating through, probably hanging out through the day, most birds migrate at night, so they stay during the day, they feed, wait for favorable winds, and then move on north. Where might he end up? Anywhere in Canada, you know, in the coniferous forests mm -hmm. in Canada, possibly the northern tier of the states in the U.S. as well. Um, but uh, it's amazing how far they can travel. So yeah. hundreds of miles, little bitty guys like these. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Oh, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Vern Clean, you've been banding birds for a while, like a few decades anyway, right? Yes. You're, you're, you <laughs> call yourself retired, but you work all the time. And you've been working out here for since 2012, banding birds at Lincoln Land Community College. That's correct. Yeah. So you're an expert at this thing, and, and you're one of the few people in town that has a banding. You need, you need to be registered or certified to do this, don't you? You have to have a federal bird banding permit to do this. A That's permit. correct. Yeah, and there mm -hmm. aren't many of you around, are there? Well, I think I'm the only one in Springfield. <laughs> okay. Well, what do, you, what do you have in your hand? Well, show us what you got. This is a bird that uh, we know as a hermit thrush. It's one of about five species of thrushes that are kind of a brownish color uh -huh. that are passing through Illinois this time of year. This is the earliest, uh, the main thrushes to go through. Um, the others will be showing up uh, probably in about two or three weeks from is now. Is that right? Okay, is this large for a thrush? or is yeah, that This is na natural size. They're all about this size. Uh, mm -hmm. There's one that's larger and they're all about this size. Yeah, and, and they, they, they're all passing through. None of them stay here year round. We huh? have one species, it's called a wood thrush, that stays with us in the summertime only. Uh -huh. um, and it will be arriving around the 1st of May. Mm -hmm. yeah. He has a very sharp beak. What does he use that? Pointed for? beak, a basically, pointed beak. but uh, feeding on berries and insects a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the purpose of banding this bird is so that if he is captured again, there will be data, is, is this, am I right on this? That yes. There, that there will be data recorded again about this bird so we can get his whereabouts and when, when he moves and where he goes and those kinds of things? What is his migration patterns, if he comes back again or not, mm -hmm. um, a lot of other reasons for banding, how old do they live to be? Um, in the fall, we can find out if it was a successful nesting season for these species or not. Um, so there's a variety of has this one been banded or will not it yet. be the first Should we go ahead and process time? it? Let's do it. Let's let's okay. see how you do it. We've got a variety of tools available to us. We're doing that. We've got a whole series of different kind of bird bands here, and this one takes a what we call size B. Open it up. I don't know if you can see the band. Oh, or they're not. so tiny. It, it really is hard to see. And you open it up. Then we put it in the different pliers here. 
Okay, hold and that so still for a shoot. Just hold that for a moment. Okay, I think we're getting a picture of that. Okay, so, so that pliers is fit for that band. And that is. Oh, look at that I little, put tiny the, little leg. And I can squeeze as hard as I want. It's mm -hmm. not going to do anything because from the holes in the pliers, it makes a perfect ring on the bird's And it doesn't leg. disturb the bird to wear that around. No, huh? it does not. And it's, it's loose like a bracelet. Mm -hmm. And what information is on that band? So when it's captured All bands again, have a nine-digit number. There are two, no two bands with the same number. Okay. So if another bander gets bands, he's going to have his assigned numbers of bands, but they're all going to be a nine digits. Okay, and that nine digit number is different than any other bird is wearing. Is that right? That's correct. It's okay, so, so, so this is it's recorded. It's like a telephone number in a this, way. Okay, or a social security number. Our social security number. And this number. young man over here is recording that this thrush has this number band and when it was applied and that kind of all that information. Huh? That is correct. Along with the other data that we take on these birds. And the, that includes the measurement and measurement. all that kind of stuff. Okay. And we can right. do that right now. One yeah, let's thing, do measurement. We can check for the fat. <laughs> this bird has no fat left. He used it all up during his migration, so now he stopped here and he's going to refuel before he so continues. So he'll be here for a while. He yeah, needs, to, a good he chance needs to fatten up a little bit, huh? Okay. But they can do that very quickly. It could be in a day's time. Really? And then one other standard measurement we could take variety is like uh, Mr. Roadfring said a bit ago, um, a wing cord, and this is mm -hmm. 92 millimeters. He's considerably bigger than that 58 millimeters that we okay, saw just a moment crown ago. Kingland, that's yeah, correct. Yeah. So, this bird is ready to be released. Do you do you uh, allow one of your students here to release it? Is we that can do that. Another thing I can say about this particular bird, you see on those flight feathers right there, little rusty edges. So we know that this bird was hatched last year. Oh, yeah, okay. Birds that are older than that will not have those little rusty edges. Okay, and how old will he live to be it, under well, we, good circumstances? If he survives the first year, and apparently he's done well, um, this bird will probably be, can live up to six or eight years. Wow, okay, so we'll see him again. He'll come through well, here again more than likely, huh? Um, is that a possibility? Yeah, yeah, okay. And it would be a pleasant possibility if, yeah, he, if sure he does. Would. Can, can we hand, is there a student here that would like to release this bird? Somebody come forward and, and take this bird because we want to get a picture of you releasing it. Lawrence is going to do this. Let's put it. Okay, Lawrence knows how to hold it. Yeah. Huh? Let's okay. Okay, very slowly for us, Lawrence, so we can get, get a picture of this. There he goes. Oh, right to the nearest tree. He says, boy, I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> Nick, we've been talking to these gentlemen, these banders, and they've all been doing this for many years. You, you're not in that category. You're not kind quite. of a newbie, aren't you? Yes, I am. But you are a bio you're going to be a biology major, aren't you? That's the plan, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about this appeals to you? You sit out here on a cold morning. <laughs> What, what do you like about this? Um, well, I really like the people. Vern and Tony are both, you know, great teachers. I've taken, you know, probably three of Tony's classes right now. Yeah. So uh, I'm very familiar with them, and I really like the birds, the, the biology aspect of everything. It's yeah. just uh, something that appeals to me. There's a lot of science involved. I mean, there's certain things that are really, that's really cool about, like, watching the behavior of birds and other mm -hmm. animals. But there's a lot more to it. Like, I'm looking at this data that you're keeping here. There's a lot of science involved. In oh, this absolutely, area. yeah. There's all kinds of vitals and information we have to take about the birds that you have to kind of be familiar with to know what you're, yeah. you're looking at. T Tony's going to start banding for us here real quick, and we're going to get come around behind you and get a look at the kind of data absolutely. that you have to keep here. But um, this looks like, is this just a typical day for you out here at the banding station? Pretty much, yep. Um, a lot of the, the workers here go around and collect the birds, and then I sit at the book and try and keep track of information that they're, they're yeah. bringing up to me. Do you ever get to collect, too? I mean, do you ever yep. get to go out and do that? Yep, sometimes we kind of rotate and around and, and various people go out and do different things. Um, I like to record just because I, I learn a lot of information about the birds that way, yeah. but um, I also go out and collect the birds yeah. as well. Is this, is this just to this, this morning's data? No, this is actually from a few days around. We have a date right here, so this one is actually, uh, the page starts at March 28th and goes through all the way down today, which is 410. Okay. But each different page has different days that uh, it starts with and ends with. So mm -hmm. it's a very scientific process. That yeah, we, oh, it certainly through. is. This is recorded here. It's also 
recorded in a national mm -hmm. database as well, right? Absolutely. Do you send that data? Who does that? Um, I believe that Vern sends the data off to mm -hmm. the, uh, the U.S. Geological Survey, but um, a lot of the information that we do for another system of, of bird banding goes to that survey, and we have to input that data ourselves and upload it into a computer and all kinds of information. When, when you get a bird that's already been banded, mm -hmm. Is that, is that an exciting thing? Does that make you want to go and, and, and check it out? It, it is interesting to go back and look at all of the, uh, the changes that have happened. Um, a lot of times, they're pretty much the exact same as what we've written before, but we'll get birds that are you know, several years old, and it's really interesting to see that they, they've migrated from down south all the way back up here several years later. Yeah. And, and you might get one. Have you ever gotten one that you actually that got banded here? Oh, that yeah. You've recaught, yeah, that several got, times. Yep. Really? Yeah. So Absolutely. they must they must feel comfortable. I mean, I like it here, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What does it say about a bird's intelligence that they would get caught in the same net over and over? Again? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the nets are pretty thin, so I guess they can't really see them, but they they must not remember it very well. I'd yeah, say. <laughs> I guess that the the point is to make them so that they don't know the right, nets there, Absolutely. right? So it's really not their fault, but. But you, you would think that they'd learn something from that you experience. Think so. <laughs> maybe it's not that unpleasant, really. The way, I, the way we've been watching, you know, the way they're handled, mm -hmm. they don't seem to be alarmed no, or no. hurt or in any way, you know, like, Absolutely. like bothered by the process. Not at all. They, they seem pretty comfortable with us handling them, and they, they don't, they're never stressed out too much. So it, they, they're very familiar with the process if they've been caught before. If, if you go through and get your biology degree, what would you like to do with it? Um, I would like to do some scientific research. I've talked to Tony about that before, so that would be something that I'd be interested in going into, um, especially birds. They, they fascinate me, so yeah. I, I really like learning about them and, yeah. and just the variety. Do, do you want to go ahead and get permitted to ban birds? That's a long way down the line, but it would definitely be something I'm interested in yeah. doing. Yeah. It's a fascinating process to watch when you watch. You know, it, it's. I don't, do you? Can you identify that bird for us? That one right there. Uh -huh. uh, I probably cannot. I have an idea, but I'm not. Well, go ahead and give us your idea. Sure. I think we'll it's tell a, you right I think it's a Phoebe of some kind. A probably a, okay. maybe a black Phoebe or an Eastern. Phoebe. It's an Eastern okay. Phoebe. Good yes. for you. Yeah. Good for you. All right. Success. Okay, now get to work. All right. <laughs> Size zero. Size zero. <laughs> we should be. On. Lawrence, you've been, this is your first, you're a student, right? Right. And, and you, I, I, frankly, I was expecting younger students, but this is a, these, these are folks are learning, lifelong learning. I mean, right. they're, they're here in their 70s and they're here learning about birds. You, this is your first day at the bird banding station, and, sure. and you got an interesting story because you work here at Lincoln Land right. Community College, and on your day off, you want to you wanna take a class. Well, I, I've tried to always take classes because college does provide employees that opportunity so Indeed. I tend to always try to take class every semester and you're a horticulturist I'm right horticulturist so you work outside a lot I do yeah yes yeah. I take care of the some of the gardens and the trees out here yeah and, and, the, and the birds <laughs> birds yeah I'm interested it's an interest because it, there's an interplay between the plants I plant and what they do sure and uh, biology related background all that good stuff yeah. so yeah. Uh, I try to help these people out here so that they get varieties of bird and they have their birds returned mm -hmm. every year. So mm -hmm. by providing different uh, plant material yeah. that they might like. I, I noticed that you're you're taking notes here, you know, very carefully. Will there be an exam today or? Not today, <laughs> but at the end of the semester, I'm told that we need to know these birds uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. on site. Well, you know, everybody's so. got their identification books here, and mm -hmm. when now, do you take down the same data? that Nick takes down here? No, I basically have to be able to identify the bird and possibly some of the habitat, like I may cheat a little bit, but occasionally I will identify a group of birds by the habitat they're in. Mm -hmm. That way it narrows down my selection of what type of bird it might be. Mm -hmm. It's just my personal yeah. little trick I developed. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so and now, when you're out doing your work, your horticulture work, mm -hmm. you'll be better at identifying what little creatures yeah, are out there. Right. And like I say, you know, occasionally you find something that's unique, and I might tell Tony or one of the other instructors that they can run out and get a picture of it or something. We have several uh, interested people on, on staff that are good photographers. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. They have published some really nice pictures of various yeah. birds. Well, thank so, you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Good luck. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, this is a, this great. Is a good bird.
Grace, what do we uh, have? You do you have any idea what this no, is, Grace yeah. Norris? That is a red-breasted nuthatch. And how do you know that? Well by the markings, the field markings. She has the eye bands, is that right? Yes, the eye, the eyebrow line, and then the dark line that goes through the eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see the color on her little breasts there. Mm -hmm. This is the- Oh, it's uh, a per, it's a per, yeah, she's a perfect a, repli replica of what she's supposed to look exactly, like. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Sometimes I look at these bird books and I don't see the similarity, but this one looks just like her picture. Yeah, you can see the, the bands yeah. on the eyes and then the color on yeah. her breasts. Well, Grace, you know a little bit about birds, and you've been in this class this whole semester, but this is the first one of these you've seen? Yes. Kind of a thrill, isn't it? It is a thrill. Um, and like I said, I have um, been involved in the feeder watch through uh, Springfield Autobahn and yeah. at the Adams Wildlife Sanctuary, mm -hmm. and this is the first red-breasted nuthatch that I've seen, so it's really exciting. Yes, it is. Um, you know what? I think what we're going to do is ask you, they're going to ban this bird, and then I'm going to ask you to release it for us, okay? All right? Okay. Do you mind doing that? No. Okay, good, <laughs> good. It's so the gender tiny. on this? tiny. <clears throat> I think it's a female. I think you're right. <laughs> good, good, Grace. 65. 65 millimeters, is that millimeters. right? Millimeters, okay. On that wing cord. Uh huh. Zero fat. We're looking for fat, and that little, that she needs a feeding, doesn't she? That's right. She needs to eat. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, so Grace. So we're ready to release this bird. Should I take my gloves off? Um, sure. We're going to step out here. Okay. If that is okay. And that bird's so little, we may not get to see it fly, but we're going to try. We're going to try, Grace. So you're going to hold your hand like this. I'm going to swing around, excuse me. And the head is going to be above your fingers, and then you just curl your hand very gently around the bird's body. You're not squeezing it, you're just holding it. And then put your other hand directly underneath. Perfect. You're just going to walk Can you feel out. its heart beating, Grace? Yes. <laughs> and then you're just going to open your hand. Oh, how cute. What a thrill. How cute. Is that a thrill? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Lincoln Land Community College is the only college in Illinois with a bird banding station. And this building was built by the construction trade students at the Workforce Development Department. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.